You are listening to Radio Maria Canada. We now present the Health Hub, hosted by Kathy Biasi. the Health Hub on Radio Maria Canada, exploring cutting-edge health and wellness information and therapies helping you to take your health to the next level. I am your host, Kathy Biasse, and I am an holistic nutritionist and a professional cancer coach. On today's show, we are talking about burnout. Classic signs of burnout include anxiety, lack of creativity, low mood, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, not eating well, and difficulty sleeping. Statistics have shown that about two-thirds of full-time employees say they have experienced burnout at some point in their careers. Women are more likely than men to feel burnout at work, and the burnout gender differential has more than doubled since 2019. But what we are seeing today is that these same signs of burnout are spreading beyond the workplace and becoming more increasingly common in our teenagers and in our young mothers. And if ignored, burnout can have significant consequences, including insomnia, depression, substance abuse, heart disease, and high blood pressure. Our guest today is April Likens. April is a board-certified health coach, dual-trained at Duke Integrative Medicine and the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Driven by her own previous experience of hitting burnout, which led to a health collapse, she's fiercely passionate about helping women thrive inside and out. April's specialty is helping professional women and female entrepreneurs reduce stress, find balance, and feel the joy and freedom to walk in their purpose, passions, and callings. She lives in Virginia with her family, and when she's not working with clients, she enjoys writing and speaking on wellness topics, traveling, photography, and searching for the perfect matcha latte, woman after my own heart. We have lots and lots of things to discuss. Some of our major learning points are the difference between burnout and stress, warning signs of burnout, and bringing balance back into life. This is a fantastic show. I do hope you stick with us. We will be back in just a few minutes to talk with April Likens. Crazy life 
feet and be just be chaos calls but all you really need is to take it in fill your lungs the peace of God that overcomes just Just breathe You are listening to Radio Maria Canada. We now continue with the program The Health Hub, hosted by Kathy Biasi. Welcome back, everybody. Today's show has been recorded, so no opportunity for calling in. Please do follow us on our social sites. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we are at the Health Hub RMC on those locations. April, welcome to the show. Hi, Kathy. Thanks so much for having me on. It's such a pleasure talking about this subject because it in, it in and of itself isn't pleasurable, but it is such a topic that bears conversation. Nice. Um, you know, burnout, stress, the whole nine yards. And I really think we're starting to grasp the importance of getting these things under control for our better health. Um, So lots and lots of stuff to talk about uh, in the next 40 minutes. I'm really looking forward to it. But tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a board certified health coach. Um, I live in Virginia and the Blue Ridge Mountains kind of surround us here. It's really lovely right in the middle of the state. Um, But I help um, busy, high achieving women just beat exhaustion and burnout, really, so they can get back to um, their spark, energy and joy and really living their life again. So I work with clients one-on-one, um, but I am working on a burnout course and a book as well. Oh, so I really love, you. yeah, I love speaking and writing on just wellness topics, really just so that I can help people on a larger scale, because this is a topic that's really personal to me. I've been there and I understand what it feels like to hit burnout and to be stressed and to struggle with your sleep and all the things too. So I, um, I'm just really passionate about helping others live healthier lives and, and, and just using my story as kind of a catalyst for that. Well, we'd love to hear your story for sure. Yeah. Do you want to kick you, me to kick that off of kind of how I hit burnout? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I hit burnout initially way back in like 2013 after my father died. Um, he had battled a really long um, cancer diagnosis. He was really young. And so he was diagnosed with prostate cancer at 49 and it was full blown at that point. So they, they really only gave him a 50, 50 shot um, at the point. And so we, you know, I, I, at that time, I kind of just, it was a shock, right? So we were super close and this felt like this came out of left field. And so I really wanted to just figure out what the heck was causing all the rise and all these diseases and cancers aside from genetics. And that's when I kind of landed on epigenetics, which is, you know, how our environment plays a huge role in disease. And so, you know, together we revamped our whole lifestyles um, and, it, you know, and started eating healthier, working out, just doing a lot of things right. And it's cool because looking back, I really feel like that helped to prolong his life and gave gave us a couple extra years with him, which I really cherish that. And so um, so I'd made all these, you know, healthy changes, right? And and then he ends up eventually passing away. And I reverted back to just my old ways of coping with things. And honestly, I think for a lot of us, you know, when life hits in a hard way that's unexpected or devastating, you know, there is that temptation to want to try to cope 
um, and you know, to avoid those hard feelings that we don't want to feel. So that can be turning to anything from you know food, binge eating, you know, stress eating. That could be turning to more alcohol. That could be shopping. You know, people can um, can start gambling. You know, that Netflix Netflix binge watching, which I think a lot of us have been there. You know, with that <laughs> still are on some occasions. Yeah, you find a great show and, you know, and it's, it's hard to turn it off. But for me, my weakness was workaholism. And so I reverted back to that and really just staying up till one and two o'clock in the morning. And I wasn't eating consistently or working out consistently. And I really, I was just absolutely not taking care of myself. So I did that for a couple, couple of years, just burning the candle at both ends. And I ended up hitting burnout, which led to a complete and total health collapse where I could barely get up or function for about a year and a half. And so it was, you know, it's an extreme kind of story of what can happen if you, if you, you know, allow burnout to run rampant in your life. And it was definitely for me a really, kind of rock bottom place where it was really dark and devastating and very isolating. And it took me years really to, to get my health back. So I ended up working with dozens and dozens of doctors and experts trying to figure out what was, what was going on with me. And they were all kind of at a loss. And so it, it can be, it can feel hopeless and, and frustrating at times when the experts don't know what to do with you. And sometimes mm-hmm. they don't believe you because they can't explain your symptoms and, and what you're feeling. Um, and, and so, and I was almost bedridden for a year and a half. So it was, it was quite an extreme experience and it just threw off everything from my sleep to my hormones to, you know, co- cognitive, uh, cognitively, I couldn't finish my sentences at that time, understand what you were saying to me. I mean, it was pretty wild. And so, like I said, it took years of a determined work to pick up the pieces, but during that time, I ended up just kind of getting plugged in with a health coach and I started working with her. And interestingly, she changed my life. She really impacted me in a way that the other physicians and specialists didn't because she had been there and she had had a health collapse herself. So she really understood, you know, what, what I was going through from hitting burnout and then experiencing that. So, you know, just going through all of that was dark and devastating as a really devastating season for me, losing my dad. Like I said, we were very close. He was like a mentor and a guide and a, and a best friend and a lot of different things. Um, and then experiencing that total health collapse really just lit a fire in me to help others just so that they can avoid the costly mistakes that I've made. And, you know, and I'm such a firm believer that there's always a silver lining to everything that we go through. And right, we wouldn't necessarily want to go through some of the hard, hard places in life again and how, you know, have a do-over, but you can look back with gratitude of how you were able to grow through that and the, the silver linings along the way. And so for me, it's really just been able to use my story to help others. And that's the best, the best place to start, right? When you can deal with someone on a personal level um, with, uh, with experience, I think that there's just an openness uh, for other people to work with you because you get it. Um, now burnout versus stress, are we talking the same thing or is burnout a different degree of stress? Are they two totally different things? They're kind of two different things, you know, chronic stress, you know, is, I guess it's, I, I kind of describe it as similar to like a car that's out of alignment, right? The body's always, you know, communicating with us. And, um, and I think often we're not listening. And especially I say that often with high achievers, right? We can learn to just push through things and work in the flow and the zone. And, and you're, you know, just focusing on whatever you're working on, banging that out and, and missing those warning signs until the body gradually gets louder and louder and starts screaming. And you, you, you notice that headache coming on or like that, that tension and that sort of thing too, where uh, similar to a car, you know, we've got the lights that will pop on if things are off in the car and we can choose to drive the car anyways and ignore the lights and then gradually you know that can become dangerous and that can lead to a complete breakdown and that too and so stress you know there's different types of stress you know there's good stress and there's bad stress and you know there um, so example of good stress might be going to the gym you know you get in a good workout and your body starts to stress and so it's just what, and that's a, that's a healthy stress response, you know, to help cool your core body temperature. And then maybe you're prompted to drink water too, just to kind of replenish fluids and electrolytes. That would be a good example of stress, but too much stress, you know, is when we start to experience things 
like we're feeling, you know, really anxious and depressed and, and kind of panicked or stuck and numb at times. And so, um, and again, stress is, you know, it's part of our survival mechanism. So it's designed really to keep us safe from, from threats. The problem with our modern society is we live in a world with endless stressors. So, you know, we've got these never ending, you know, things coming at us that, um, that really have, can have a similar response to being chased by a tiger. You know, the mm -hmm. body is designed to fight, flight, or flee and deal with a, a threat. Um, but those threats um, from an evolutionary standpoint, you know, really didn't come that frequently. Whereas now with our society, you know, they're coming at us all day long with emails and Slack messages and social media things. And, you know, there's just endless demands. And so that can, that can really create um, way too much stress that can kind of stack up over time. And then burnout is really the extreme kind of version of that where, you know, the World Health Organization is really dubbed it, you know, the unoccupational phenomenon due to unmanaged stress. So it's that long-term stress that kind of stacks up like dominoes over time that we aren't dealing with that can finally lead to, to burnout. And burnout's kind of that final straw, you know, that breaks us, where you just kind of get to this place where you feel like you just can't handle one more thing. And so, and that, you know, often shows up for people with things like you know, exhaustion. I see um, sleep issues. That can be something that a ton of people are experiencing right now too. Cynicism about your job too and reduce performance. And then it can show up in a lot of other other ways too. But it's it's interesting. I read a while back and I had I just reread this recently because I had forgotten about it. But Japan has long had a name for for burnout, which is I think it's pronounced Kiroshi, which means um, over basically death from overworking, you know, and so it's interesting that they they recognize that decades ago that that you know too much stress is is really dangerous for your health, your mental and physical health, and your longevity, your immune system, you know, all kinds of things. It can really wreak havoc if if le it's left unchecked. No. Would you say that, I, I just get this picture in my head, you know, with all of the, uh, you know, with what you've said, burnout doesn't necessarily have to start from the psychological platform, does it? Burnout can creep up on you from daily tasks. It doesn't, it's not necessarily a, a psychological phenomenon. Yeah, I mean, there's a variety of things that can lead to it. I mean, you've got even mom burnout happening right now, too, with just the last couple of years and the changes with, you know, with COVID and, and um, daycare and all the things, too. And so that's been um, really elevated as well. But yes, it can be definitely caused from a lot of a lot of different things. Um, and experts kind of um, recognize from Stanford, they recognize six main causes of burnout. So there's workload, there's a perceived lack of control in your life. So that could be in a lot of different areas, not necessarily just work. Um, there could be that lack of reward and recognition is another cause, a lack of support and relationships. So feeling like you're, you're alone, that you're just, you know, dealing with this on your own and you don't have that support system. A lack of fairness can be another one. And then just a values mismatch as well. well that's very interesting. Now, when would you, or I guess not when would you, what are classic signs that burnout is, is starting to creep in that we should be aware of? Yeah. So we touched on a couple of them. So first is that exhaustion. So if you feel, you know, chronically exhausted and fatigue, that's a really big warning sign or you just feel mentally and physically exhausted all the time. You know, we touched on cynicism too, where you feel really cynical about your work and you dread it. You know, maybe it's something you used to love and now you're like, oh, you know, you get the Sunday scaries where, you know, you start feeling that anxiety on Sunday night as, as work is approaching um, or just cynical about life in general. Insomnia, like we said, that's a major one that can, too much stress can absolutely dysregulate your sleep and then lack of sleep can, can cause more stress. So that one's a whole topic in itself that can really snowball too. But, you know, just feeling more anxious overwhelmed, irritable, short-tempered. And then, um, and then, you know, there's physical signs too, where stress can show up as you know, too much stress, as, as we touched on with like chronic headaches, migraines, the eating changes. So maybe you're 
um, you're eating less, you're eating more, you're um, experiencing more uncontrolled emotional eating or a craving like the carbs, the, the high fat, the high sugar. Like, unfortunately, nobody at, when they're stressed ever like, you know, craves carrots and kale. Yeah. <laughs> Never, right? It's always it's always the junk food kind of stuff. And so, and when people are stressed, some people will actually eat less so that, you know, it doesn't always mean eating more. Some people will, will eat far less if they're under too much stress. IBS symptoms is another big one. Um, mm-hmm. Stomach is very sensitive to too much stress and the gut microbiome. And so if you're experiencing a lot of stomach aches, um, bloating, uncomfortableness, IBS, that sort of thing, that could be a sign that, you, that you're under too much stress. Chronic pain in a certain area. I, I see with a lot of clients and then myself too, that, you know, that when you're under stress, it often it shows up in a certain area for you. Like that could be your neck or your back, especially as women, we seem to carry a lot of our stress um, in our necks as well. So it just really, and the thing about it is, you know, stress and burnout, both of them, you know, there's, there's no one way to experience them. So it really, it does show up for everyone differently. The key is just to kind of be aware of those warning signs. And really the number one thing I tell clients, and if you're listening, this is like the number one takeaway, I would tell you the most important thing is, is being mindful of your body and just checking in with yourself daily. So asking yourself for 30 seconds a day, what do I need today to thrive? you know, and give yourself this 30 second space to really ask that question and to listen, you know, and part of this, you know, chronic stress and burnout epidemic is we've just gotten so good at turning off those signals and disconnecting ourselves from our bodies. But when you can really get back into your body and be really in tune with it, it, the cool thing is it's, you know, it'll tell you what it needs and it's Mm -hmm. intelligently designed to course correct. So when you ask yourself that question, if you're listening and you ask yourself that question today, you know, it's going to change daily. So today you might feel like, oh my gosh, I've been at the computer way too long. I need to get up and stretch. Like I need to move. I'm starting to feel some tension or you know what? Um, It's, it's been raining for three days and the sun is out. I, I want to go outside for 15 minutes and, you know, get some vitamin D and some fresh air and unplug just for a couple of minutes. Or maybe I want to take a walk. I feel like I need some movement. You know, the key again is just checking in with yourself daily and, and giving yourself what you need. And it's going to change daily and it's going to change seasonally based on just what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you choose to work with women um, solely? Is, is, do women, uh, do we carry more of the, the load of burnout than men or uh, is it just your preference? Um, So I work with both, but my niche, yes, is more women. So I do work with men as well. So you find women experience burnout more? I would say no, um, no. not necessarily. I've just um, just ended up working with more women than men. But I think, you know, I could get myself in trouble here, but my husband's a chiropractor. And so, um, you know, we've long run his practice for a couple of decades. And and I would just say, I think that, um, that women are a little quicker to put their... Um, to place their health as a priority, right? You know, it's, mm-hmm. I hear often from people that they have to drag their husband to the, the doctor's office or, you know, nag him to going and get his physical and that sort of thing too. And so, I don't know, I think um, women are just more receptive to to work on these things a little bit quicker, but I've absolutely worked with some incredible men that I've loved working with and they've, um, you know, been a gift to work with and taught me a lot too. Well, wonderful. Now, you said early on in the show that there can be some silver linings to burnout. Can you give us a couple? Yeah, as far as my own story or? Yeah, in general, like where you've seen people thrive from going through the process, you can relate it to yourself. Yeah, so I was working with a client not that long ago that she actually came to me and she had been she'd been losing her eyesight off and on right prior to us working together. Um, and, and again, that's an extreme story, but she manages a billion dollar account for a very well-known company um, in the United States and is under tremendous stress. As you can imagine, that's their, their main account and she's over that. And so um, she was trying to manage and juggle, you know, her career and then two very small children at home in the middle of COVID. And again, what like we were talking about with just the uncertainty of the daycare and the back and forth and all this stuff. I think she had, I'm trying to remember, she had a three-year-old and like a one-year-old, like they're super young. And that's really hard to be at a like senior level position with kids at home and back and forth. And so she was, 
she was obviously extremely stressed. And so we started working on a number of things together and creating healthy boundaries and, and a variety of, and adding in self-care and all this. But, but in her big fear, when we first started working together, was she was going to have to quit her job and their, her family relied on that income. You know, she was the breadwinner. And so that was something that could potentially be devastating for them and was triggering more stress. But just through working together, you know, she really just got back to her values of what was really important to her in um, in all of this. And it was really family and it was having more time for um, for them and her husband. And she was feeling like, you know, work was taking up way too much time and she was missing out on their lives. And so we, we worked on a lot of a lot of things, you know, and some of it was setting boundaries at work and de delegating. It was communicating her needs to at work and all of this, but it was really incredible to watch her completely transform and, and not only kind of take back her health and, um, and her life, but, you know, be able to stay in that, that job too. But for her, she had to really reevaluate what her non-negotiables were. And I think for all of us, you know, hitting burnout or the tough places in life can really, and even COVID for that matter, right? You've seen the silver lining with COVID for so many people where it's forced you to really sit and think about, you know, what is most important to you, you know, and are you living a life that is alignment with your highest values? And so um, that can be, I think, a great opportunity for reflection when we are in those tough spots. It's, it, it amazes me how hard in, you know, in this, in the scope of, of health, self-examination can be the hardest thing to tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just a matter. I mean, this is really introspection. And as you said, it's, it's really getting in tune with our values. And the other thing, you know, from your, from, you know, what you've been talking about in our conversation, and I've seen it is the physiological physiological manifestation of mm -hmm. of of burnout and of stress it's just you know it's it's a hidden piece in health that i think uh just so 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 important to address we're going to take a quick break everybody will be right back to talk with april more about burnout more about you know pointed strategies and where the role of perception is in the burnout piece so we'll be back in just a few minutes Speak to my weary heart, strengthen my broken parts, lead me to your open arms. Word of truth, illuminate all these lies. The enemy speaks inside, and freedom I will rise. Cause you call me out.
You are listening to The Health Hub, here on Radio Maria Canada, a Catholic voice wherever you are. To contact us and be a part of the show, email thh at radiomaria.ca. We now continue with the program. Here once again is your host, Kathy Biasi. Welcome back. We're talking with April Likens about burnout. One thing with stress, when we talk about stress, it's how we internalize things. It's how we, you know, maybe perceive events and internalize them. Where do you find perception fits in with burnout? Well, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge deal. I think a, a big tie to that and that you know, our perception matters. And so it's interesting, there's been some recent studies and on stress and on burnout, and how, you know, how dangerous they are for our health, our mental and physical health, but how our perception really determines how dangerous they are. So if we're perceiving things to be more negative, and and damaging stress wise, that can have a more heightened physiological response. Um, on our body, which is really interesting too. And, and, you know, and so much of stress is it's making those mental shifts, you know, and it's a mindset work too. And it's, it's things like recognizing, you know, what we can control versus what we can't. And um, like traffic, I talk about this one often, right? You know, we've all been there, you've been <laughs> running away and then bam, there's like, there's an accident or there's uh, construction or there's something unexpected. And then like, you're just not going anywhere. <laughs> it is what it is. You're sitting there. And, you know, one person can sit there and have a, a meltdown, bang on the steering wheel, have this massive stress response and, um, and freak out. You know, the other person can, you know, can feel the stress and, and choose instead to maybe do some deep breathing or do some meditation or maybe call somebody while they're, they're in the car or listen to your podcast. You know, there's a number of different things that you can do too, but um it's what we focus on grows in that, in our lives and in our, in our mindset. And so, you know, viewing the things again, kind of what we were talking about before with the silver lining. And so when the unexpected stressors hit, you know, asking yourself, you know, what, what good can come out of this? What's how can I grow through this? What can I learn through this? And there's always, there's always something that you can glean from every, you know, negative situation, even if it's just, a learning lesson. But well, so much there are a with- lot of doors to open, aren't there, when we're mm-hmm. tackling this? Um, oh, yeah. You know, it, it, and it, you know, just the actual, you know, if someone's sitting here listening and saying, you know, I do have burnout. Wow, I've got to deal with my perception. I've got to deal with this. I've got to deal with sleep. I've got to deal with, you know, my own internal values. It can be a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and that too can be stressful, right? Oh, um, yes. So when you start, where do you start with, with your, your client, with yourself? Cause as you said, preventing burnout is an ongoing thing. Dealing mm-hmm. with stress is ongoing. What are your non-negotiables throughout a day, throughout a practice for handling burnout? Yeah, that's a great question. So first for me, I'm really intentional with kind of, kind of having mindful mornings because I'm of that mindset, either you run the day or the day runs you. Mm-hmm. And so we've all had those days where you, you wake up late, um, maybe hit the snooze a little too much or whatever, and you wake up, you know, and you hit the ground running and the rest of the day is like a mad stress race. You know, it's just a rat race and it just feels like a you know, a disaster and you wish, you know, you just go back and do a do-over. And so if, you know, for me, I like to just spend a little bit of time in the morning pausing, you know, and having a little bit of space really to just be strategic with my morning. And so that's, um, you know, that's not looking at my tech first thing in the morning. So not checking, you know, email and reading the news and that sort of thing, but starting from more of a centered place in the morning where maybe I'm reading something that's inspiring or I'm listening to something that's inspiring, maybe doing a little deep breathing, getting a little movement or stretching in. But again, you know, just giving yourself that space. So it doesn't have to be like, oh, I need to get up and have an extra hour or two hours or get up at four o'clock in the morning. And if that's not your thing, you know, it can just be literally 15, 20 minutes just to pause. And again, just catch your breath and, and be intentional with how you want to start the day. 
tech, like I said, the tech use is a big one for me. So I um, actually had a male client a couple, like this past <laughs> year that started during COVID um, putting his phone away in the evening. And he was so disciplined in that and inspired me to do the same thing too. And so I kind of call it bookends. So I'm mindful of my tech use at the beginning of the day, but also the end of the day too, um, for a number of reasons. You know, it's hard to just jump right into bed, you know, after you've been banging out emails or whatever and, and fall asleep. It's far too overstimulating for a lot of us. And so, um, or checking the news and doing all that stuff too. And it, of course, the blue light can dysregulate your sleep and all of that. So I, um, I gradually bumped it up to, I started with 30 minutes, then I, then I worked up to an hour before bed. And so now about two hours before bed, I just put it, put it away. And the cool thing, you know, we're all addicted to our devices, right? They're designed mm -hmm. to be addicted. If you addictive. And, and so if you've watched the social dilemma, you completely understand that. But, um, the cool thing about it is they're very much out of sight, out of mind. So, you know, if you if you put your phone in the other room and you can't see it or it's across the room, the temptation to check it and check it and check it is virtually zero. And so that's um, just a powerful, small little practice that I um, that I do daily, too. And then I just um, I try to be intentional to get some form of movement in daily, too, even if it's just a walk. The great thing is that first moving is, you know, a wonderful way to de-stress and walking is a very quick way to regulate your nervous system and, um, and all movement is beneficial to the body. So it doesn't have to be, you know, marathons and CrossFit and all this crazy working out. It can literally be doing some stretching, you know, doing some Pilates, doing, you know, doing bar, doing weights, um, walking, whatever, whatever you enjoy doing, but those are my non-negotiables, but the, you know, the, so the, for clients, you know, those listening, you know, we touched on the, the first one, which is always listening to your body daily, asking yourself, what do I need today to thrive? Second is sleep. Sleep, sleep is really the superpower to feeling your best inside and out. And it is so crucial for managing our stress levels and preventing burnout. You know, lack of sleep can really create more stress like we touched on in the beginning, and that can just create this vicious snowball cycle for a lot of people. So, and, and for high achievers, it's tough. Um, the gentleman that I was talking about that was with the, with the tech devices, when he first came to, to work with me, you know, he was one of those like, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. He's former military. And, and um, you know, he just felt like oh, I can tough it out. I don't need sleep and that sort of thing. And I was kind of laughed. I'm like, okay, we'll get to that. We'll talk about that <laughs> eventually. But, um, you know, for high achievers, you know, sleep's really gotten a bad rap for really since the industrial revolution, where prior to that, people really revered sleep. But at that point on, you know, sleep, we've started hearing these phrases like, oh, you snooze, you lose, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and it's really first switching your mindset to really seeing sleep as a major asset and you know the body's actually doing incredible things in the middle of the night so it's there's some areas of your brain that are more active while you're sleeping you know it's it's categorizing memories it's wiping things memories from the day that doesn't need to be there it's regulating your blood pressure your immune system you're uh, lowering your cortisol levels um, it's wiping proteins that are linked to cognitive disease and decline so there's all this incredible stuff that your body's doing so it's first seeing that as a major asset and then making it a priority, you know, aiming for that seven to nine hours of sleep a night and knowing your sweet spot because everybody's number is different. And so knowing where you thrive and trying to aim for that and where you feel your best the next day is really important. I talk a lot too about rest being the antidote to burnout, especially for higher achievers. You know, it sounds so counterintuitive, you know, because we're used to hustling and grinding and doing all the things and sometimes wearing that as unfortunately as a badge of honor. And there is such power in pausing, you know, and, and being still and, and learning to rest and learning to unplug and to um, make space for things like connection and fun. And it's so interesting because I talk to clients often about, you know, this topic and I often ask them, you know, what do you do for fun? And they look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, I have no idea that, you know, I just get blank stares or, or they're like, well, I like to go to the gym. And I'm like, well, that's, that's good, but that's not technically fun. So what do you, what do you do for fun? And I think as adults, we've lost track of that. We've mm -hmm. lost sight. Of, we've lost sight of that. And that's, 
that's um, a huge part of being able to manage your stress is being able to do things that bring you joy and that light you up and, and, you know, just create a spark in you too. And so getting back into those things can be really powerful for preventing, for preventing burnout too. And we touched on too, you know, just shifting your focus to the gifts and the challenges, the positive things, you know, how can I grow through it too? And really setting those healthy boundaries. I think especially still now more than ever, we still have so many people still, you know, working from home. They're, they're, they're hybrid, you know, and it's tough, right? Because your office is there and it's always there. So there's that temptation to like, just check, just check it one more time, check it, you know, your email yeah. one more time. And then, you know, that adds up over time, right? You know, you can do that quite a few times. And then the next thing you know, it's nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, you know, or the weekends and you're, you're checking things. So knowing those neg- non-negotiables of when do you want to be working? When do you not want to be working and creating those boundaries where, you know, you can log off your laptop when you're done. You can put your phone in the other room. I mean, there's different techniques that have worked with worked for clients that I've worked with. Sometimes people have to even turn off notifications too after hours so that you're not, you're not getting pinged, you know, mm-hmm. from your boss and Slack messages and all the things in the evening and the weekend if you don't want to be um, working during that time too. And then, and, you know, it, the, it, we want to be the everything, the all, mm-hmm. you know, it, the best person is the one who goes, goes, goes and tackles all of the, the things out there that they want, like the, the, the to-do list that never ends. Right. Um, and, and I have to think, you know, for, for the majority of us, the biggest piece is, no, I shouldn't say the biggest piece. One of the biggest things for me would be to tackle the, the piece of guilt where you're focusing on yourself now. Because we're not used to doing that as a society anymore. You know, it's how much you can get, as you mentioned, how much you can get done in a 24 hour span. Uh, You you know, sleep is kind of put off to the side because we have things we have to continually check off, whether you're a mom, whether you're an executive, there's always something to do. Mm -hmm. And I think with these to-do lists, it builds in guilt and it can build in a sense of lack of accomplishment. So how does dealing with your own guilt about taking care of yourself factor into all of this? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it depends on the root of the guilt. And so so I see sometimes with clients, you know, that their, um, their, their identity is tied into accomplishing and doing things. And that can go all the way back to childhood, you know, where maybe they didn't feel seen and they didn't feel recognized until, you know, unless they were, um, you know, getting getting rewarded for getting good grades or excelling in sports or whatever they were doing, and you know, we can carry those things into adulthood. And and I think it's really dangerous when we place all of our self value into our work and our accomplishments because it's a it's a moving target, right? You know, it's ever changing, and so. Um, our work really shouldn't be shouldn't de- define our entire identity. When the reality is, we're we're multifaceted beings, and there's so much more that um, that makes us up other than just than work. And so it's identifying, I think, and asking yourself, where's the guilt coming from? You know, why? You know, why do you? What's the thing behind the thing? You know, and why do I feel guilt about this? And then, but why? And just keep asking yourself why. And then you can kind of uncover that root in that too. And then, then work on shifting that. Cause the reality is, you know, it's that oxygen mask, mm-hmm. you know, analogy that we've all heard, you know, if you're on a, on a plane and the plane's going down, you know, and there's people around you that need help. You're no help at all. If you don't put your oxygen mask on first. And so again, it's, it's recognizing that having a, you know, a sense of balance and self-care is really a g- gifting and showing up for the other people around you in, a, in an amazing way. Because we can't pour from an empty cup continually and survive, you know, and doing that long term really leads to burnout. And so it's, again, it's shifting your mindset of, no, this is, this is actually an asset and seeing it as something that is, you know, propelling your performance. You know, it's taking a step back so that you can move forward. And that, and the and- more you, the more you push away from this, and the longer you're in this state of constant stress, constant burnout. I imagine it might be a little bit harder to identify what your true values are. They're so mixed up with so many mm-hmm. other different things. Yeah, 
And again, it just varies. And it, you know, and light, and sometimes life is crazy and there's different seasons. And so it's about doing what you can when you can. And so that could be, you know, just adding in small little breaks throughout your day, or maybe it's, you know, you've got meetings and you don't have to be on camera. Um, you're not presenting. It's not imperative that you're on camera. So maybe you can get out and, have, and take and walk during that time, you know, and, and get a little bit of movement and, and some fresh air and the nature and the sunshine and all of that. And so it's looking for ways to add in these resilience tools where you can in the different seasons of life, you know, because there's kind of these two jars that we're pouring into all day long. There's this burnout jar of all the needs and the demands and the things that are coming at us. And then we have this resilience jar, which we can intentionally pour into with, you know, choosing things like movement, you know, healthy boundaries, taking breaks. You know, um, to actually taking your lunch break. I mean, I talk to so many people that they don't even take their lunch break. And we have to start even kind of working towards that. You know, they wolf down their food and, and while they're at the computer and that's that. And that can cause a variety of other issues and, and digestive issues and, and things there. And so, you know, it's listening to your body. It's, it's that social connection. It's spending time in nature. It's just coming up with you know, some resilience tools that work for you. Because again, everybody's different and everybody's not going to respond or um, flourish with the same thing. And so, you know, knowing what what those things are. But the reality is too, you know, self-care is wonderful, but it's not enough alone to counter a toxic job or a toxic relationship mm -hmm. too. And so being mindful of that, there's no amount of bubble baths and, and no. doing masks that are going to counter Some that hard right? life decisions sometimes have to come into the into the foray yeah and exactly. isn't it amazing how far we have come from uh the time where burnout would have been a psychological thing and you know any manifestations of burnout all go back to the psychological and they're written off um to now where people like you are making it mainstay dealing with burnout as a part of health as opposed to you know those times when people were looked at strangely when they you know they had they had aches and pains and it's related to their health you know what i'm saying like it just comes so far especially for women um to be able to talk about physiological and psychological connections to their health in an open space without judgment I think mm -hmm. it is wonderful. It is. And there's, you know, we're finally starting to realize and science is showing us that too, that, you know, we kind of used to think that the mind, body, and, you know, spirit are all separate beings, separate things, but they're all connected, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all interconnected. And so, you know, if you're stressed, it's going to manifest physically. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's inevitable, but it also, you know, burnout. I love that we're finally starting to talk about this more and be open more about this and mental health and how it plays a huge role and yes. all of that. But it also, you know, from an organizational level, you know, it starts from the top down. So it really starts with leaders walking the walk and prioritizing self-care, prioritizing balance. And, um, and that gives those under them the, the freedom to be able to do that mm -hmm. and to be able to do the same, you know, and, and the temperature of an organization kind of flows from the top down. And so it, it's really got to start with leaders walking the walk and, and making, making this a priority because it does matter. And it, um, it can absolutely destroy your lives, your life. And it, um, you know, hitting burnout, it can take months uh, to recover. And sometimes for some people, it can even take years to recover. But the good news is it's far easier to prevent it than it is to recover from it. So if you're aware of, you know, kind of those warning signs that we talked about, and then you, you build these resilience tools that you can kind of keep in your, in your tool belt a la carte as you need them, um, that can be a, a very powerful and strategic way to combat burnout and, and too much chronic stress. Absolutely. And, you know, productivity, whether you're talking about it from a financial piece or from day-to-day -day tasks being done, productivity will rise mm -hmm. when we are in a much better state. That's 100% true. Um, now, are you working with people online or how can people get a hold of you if they want to talk to you? Tell us about uh, your practice. Yeah. So I work with clients um, through private one-on-one -on -one coaching um, currently, and I work with 
clients all over um, the United States and then a few in Canada as well too. But yeah, if you're listening, I'd love to connect with you. Um, I'm Globy Lovely on Instagram. So it's a little different than my name, or you can connect with me on my website, which is aprillikens.com. And I have a couple new free resources for listeners that are really helpful with all of this. So there's one um, new guide called 15 ways to say goodbye to chronic stress. So if you didn't take notes on some of these practical ways to build those resilience tools, there's a lot of my best tips in there really geared to just help you quickly lower your stress levels and find balance. And then, um, and some of, like I said, some of my top tips from really just being able to go from exhausted and burned out to thriving. And then I also have a new quiz that I just launched called, are you headed towards burnout? Which will give you a really good indication of kind of where you're at on the spectrum and some things to kind of watch out for. But if you're listening and you're struggling, or you just feel like you need a, a lifeline, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would be happy to chat with you. Um, like I said, you can connect on Instagram or through my website or I'm on LinkedIn as well too. And, or just say hi, if anything resonated and you enjoyed um, Kathy and I's conversation, say hello. It's always great to hear from you. Well, thank you. And definitely all of your contact vehicles will be put on the, on the show notes under the podcast. So um, everybody, if if you have to remember one thing, remember aprillikens.com and everything else will flow from there. April, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much, Kathy. I appreciate it. Everybody, we will talk to you next week on The Health Hub.